Hello everyone and welcome to my presentation. If all goes well, you shall be wildly entertained by the learning you're about to do. And if not, well at least you've learned something, eh? Let's jump right in. Today I'll be telling you about magic systems in fantasy writing. In fantasy writing there are generally two types of magic systems. On the one hand we have soft magic and on the other hard magic. Not only are the two systems different, but the kind of story they appear in is often dictated by the author's choice of system. These systems of magic were defined in a series of essays by Brendan Sanderson, which he titled his first, second, and third laws of magic. Of course, they aren't laws, and it's rather pretentious of him to say so, but you know, that's life. Let's begin where it makes the most sense to, which is with... DEFINITIONS! Hard magic first. A hard magic system is one with rules. There are strict costs to and limitations upon what can be done with the magic. So I can't just wave my hands and things happen. I have to know precisely what I'm doing. I have to know what I'm giving up for it, etc., etc. The rules to these systems are either explicitly defined at some point in the text or can be inferred from the repeated use of magic within the text itself. I say text. This, of course, applies to movies and such as well. Hard magic systems are often systems in which one can train in magic, treating it as a skill like any other, rather than as some crazy mystical force. This protects from deus ex machina in writing, as any problem that the characters in a hard magic story solved are solved by actual skill, not just some silly wand waving, to quote, I'm sure, someone's favorite Harry Potter character. The reader has to be able to predict what the magic could do in any given scenario, allowing them to connect better with the characters that they're watching. Soft magic, on the other hand, is just that. Soft. It's undefined. Magic is neat, and it does things, but one doesn't really know what those things are, or how it does them, per se. Magic exists as a powerful force to be manipulated by the characters, but it's never defined how this manipulation occurs or what the limits on it are. What can magic do? Who knows? Not the reader, that's for sure. These systems are for authors who want the magic to be a spectacle, something incredible and perhaps even unattainable for the protagonist. This is better for some stories, but risks contrived solutions and dissatisfaction among the audience. Now that you know what I mean when I use the terms soft and hard magic, we can get into the meat of my presentation. How magic systems shape their stories. Stories with hard magic systems and stories with soft magic systems, while they're both fantasy, are very different. They don't often have terribly much in common. Stories with the same type of magic system, however, will often share a number of characteristics about the basis of the story itself. Let us begin again with hard magic systems, because that's what we did last time. The examples I will be using are Full Metal Alchemist, Brotherhood, and Avatar The Last Airbender. Why these two shows? Because they're incredible, and also because I can put clips from them in here. It's very handy. Anyway, Hard magic systems often lead to a certain type of story being told. A story about magic. Magic is not merely another tool that the author uses, but the basis for the entire work. Story, I mean narrative here, and all. Neither Avatar nor Full Metal Alchemist could exist without their respective magic systems, though especially Full Metal Alchemist. The entire plot, from start to finish, revolves around the magic system of that world alchemy, and not only that, but the rules of that magic system, making very clear from the get-go that we're talking about a hard magic system. This clip that plays at the start of every single episode will illustrate what I'm talking about. You can see it now. Alchemy, the science of understanding, deconstructing, and reconstructing matter. However, it is not an all-powerful art. It is impossible to create something out of nothing. If one wishes to obtain something, something of equal value must be given. This is the law of equivalent exchange, the basis of all alchemy. Now, as you've just seen, Fullmetal Alchemist's entire concept relies upon the hard magic system at its core. It is the first conflict, and it is the show's entire conflict. And what is a story but conflict? Avatar similarly, is a story about magic, rather than being merely a story with magic. We follow Aang, the Avatar, and the Avatar is an idea irrevocably linked with the magic system of the world, 
Of course, Avatar is not just about magic, but look at the main character we follow, Aang. An important character because he is the Avatar, rather than being an important character who just also happens to be the Avatar. It is this link with the magic system that makes him important, that makes him our protagonist. In a hard magic system, magic is the story. Now, on to soft magic. There are many stories with soft magic systems, but for my examples, I'm going to go with two of the most well-known ones available in a video format. My soft magic systems of choice will be the magic from the Lord of the Rings, such a well-known story that it has become an archetype itself, despite the fact that it merely follows other archetypes before it, and one of the world's favorite fantasy stories that no one will admit is fantasy, Star Wars and its Force system. In both of these stories, I think it is fair to say that magic is very important, but in a different way from the ones I discussed before. Magic is a mysterious helping tool, more often and better used by antagonists and mentors than by the protagonists themselves. We see this in both Lord of the Rings and in Star Wars. In the Lord of the Rings, the main magic users who come to mind are Sauron and Sauron, the two main antagonists of the story, and Gandalf and Elrond. Gandalf being the most prominent mentor, and Elrond none too shabby himself. None of the protagonists themselves can actually do magic. Frodo has magic, but that's just the ring. It doesn't count. And the limits of the magic users' is magic is never really defined. For example, we know that Gandalf can do magic. He can do crazy magic things, but what precisely can he do? In the battle with Sauron, we see it can be a physical force. And in the fight with the Balrog, we see that he can block physical blows with magic, and he can crumble stone. Dark fire will not avail you! You shall not pass! We also know that he can create light and fireworks and other such party tricks, really, although it comes in handy sometimes. But we don't know what his limits are, or what precisely he is allowed to do within this magic system. It is vague. It is soft. In Star Wars 2, important note, I'm only talking about the original trilogy, while our protagonist Luke can use the series' magic, I know some people don't like to think of the Force as magic, it is, you're wrong. It is mainly used by his mentors, Obi-Wan and Yoda, and the antagonists, Darth Vader and Darth Sidious. Again, we have no idea what limits there are on this system. The Force seems to really do kind of whatever. We see, for example, that some people can use it to control people's minds. These aren't the droids you're looking for. These aren't the droids we're looking for. It is most commonly used as a physical force, as seen here. Concentrate. Feel the force flow. But it's also just a sixth sense that people use to feel things. Not to mention that it can be used to make some sick lightning. Kazap! So, in short, it's not very well defined. But because our main character is not particularly skilled in it, it doesn't become a deus ex machina problem. Now, a story with hard magic will very likely be a story about magic and the characters' interactions with it. The protagonists will almost certainly be magic users themselves, and in all likelihood the antagonists will as well. Oftentimes, the protagonist's skill with magic will increase throughout the story or series, as we see, for example, in Avatar. It's the story of him learning the four elements to become the Avatar. A story with a soft magic system, on the other hand, will often follow someone who can't use magic, and perhaps their struggles against it. Maybe mentors can use magic, and almost certainly the antagonists will, 
but the author avoids giving the character themselves the power of a soft magic system, because UNLIMITED POWER is really quite boring if the protagonist has it. If hand-waving is the answer to every problem in the story, there's never any real tension, and it's just not interesting. So, to conclude, magic systems are cool and important to fantasy, and I haven't even covered every option in this short piece. There are pieces between the two extremes of soft and hard, like Harry Potter, although one could argue that Harry Potter is really just a poorly written hard magic system. I know that I just made at least two of you really upset. Harry Potter's not very well written. And there are pieces that don't really align with the rules laid out above or in the three laws of magic that Sanderson wrote. For example, Piers Anthony's Xanth series, in which every single character has a unique magical talent. Each talent itself is specifically defined, usually in a very punny manner. Piers Anthony can be blamed for my sense of humor almost entirely. Uh, but a talent could really be anything. There's talents ranging from speaking any language to knowing the answer to literally any question. So. Where does that fall? It's simultaneously soft and hard. It's not really definable with the classification of above. And so, there are many more interesting things to learn about magic and fantasy writing, and I encourage you to go out and do so! Or at the very least, go out and enjoy some good magic systems. Thank you.